the Sarah Renee Show on Smooth 90.5 FM HD Radio. Good afternoon, everyone. We're back with the Sarah Renee Show. Today we're going to be going. We're going to be discussing saving money and saving money for your down payment. I have some really good clips for you guys today. Some interesting facts that may help you out. Some things that, regardless if you're going to buy a house or not, will help you out financially. So I hope you guys are ready to be entertained and, and listen to this information that we have. We're going to start with a, a clip here just talking about smart spending. I know that in life, you know, we talk about our wants and our needs, but this is a, a great way to spend smart. So I'm just going to go ahead and cue this up. It's it gives you just kind of an idea of day to day how to save money and how to spend your money, what to do, what not to do. So um, we're going to go ahead and go ahead and get into this clip. And I would appreciate if you guys are listening to feel free to give me a call today. We're taking calls. The number here at the station is 708-345-0563. Again, that number is 708-345-0563. We would love to hear from you. I'm going to go ahead and get this clip started. Please feel free to give us a call if you have any comments or questions or anything you may want me to answer. just an awesome clip about saving money so I want to just go over that briefly 
um, certain parts of that clip, they said um, she. So she, in this instance, is looked at as your child or as maybe a family member, someone that you are taking care of, a dependent, um, someone that you know that you have to take care of. So just by basically cutting down just a little bit on some of the you know, the frappuccinos that you may go, start trying to drink maybe just a regular cup of coffee. That will actually help you to start a, an emergency fund. And actually, if you stop drinking or cut down on drinking your frappuccinos, within it would actually um, be able to compile close to 70% of your $500 emergency fund. When I talk about emergency funds, what's an emergency fund? An emergency fund is a fund where you go and you have money saved and you can access it right away. Um, your tire breaks down or you know there's an issue in your home. You always want to have an emergency fund ready so that you can so that you don't have to dwell on it. You can just kind of take the money, fix the issue, and move on with the rest of your, with the rest of your life. So also in the in the clip it said to start a diary about your spending habits which I know that most of us probably will not do, but if you actually take the time to, you know, detail every single thing that you're spending money on, believe me, it's, it makes a heck of a difference. It's, it's a, a tremendous amount. Even something so little as going to get a manicure every week or every two weeks, if you cut that down, instead of going every week and maybe go every two weeks, you can just imagine the amount of money that you'll save over the course of a year. So just in talking about s smart spending, they're just saying, you know, pretty much not to give it up, but more so to just cut down. If you're, if you're a smoker and you smoke cigarettes, you know, maybe if you can help it, try and cut down to less than a pack a week. So that way you can have, you don't have to spend that money. These cigarettes out here now are very expensive. They're over, I believe, what, $10, $10 per pack? I I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not a, a cigarette smoker, but... Um, if you are, that's something that will really hurt your budget if you're steady buying um, cigarettes on a regular basis. So that's something that you can cut down on. Even something like getting your hair done. Um, if you get your hair done weekly, maybe you want to think about getting it done bi-weekly. Um, just kind of cut down a little bit and you'll, you'll be able to see those savings. It, it's a drastic, drastic difference. So the next clip I want to go into for you guys is going to be pretty much just about how to save money. We're going to also get into the best ways to save money for a down payment. Now, once I start talking about that, some of these, some of these, some of this information, all of you guys are may or may not be able to use. Some people may think it's a bad idea. Other people may think it's a good idea. But we'll just, we'll just, um, I'm going to go over them and then we'll we'll discuss it. And you guys can feel free to give me a call here at the station. Again, the number is 708-345-0563. So this next clip I want to just discuss quickly. I'm going to let this clip play. Um, it's, it's a very excellent um, financial advisor that knows how to definitely teach us how to save our money. So we're just going to let this play here. They don't know how much money they have going out. They don't have a clue where they stand today and you can't get to where you want to go if you don't know where you are. So you first have to figure out, do you have enough money coming in? Where is your money going? What are you wasting it on? And then rather than budgeting, just make little changes in your life. If you get your hair cut every four weeks, get it cut every six. If you go out to eat once a week, go out to eat every two weeks. Do little things, but not where you feel like you're restricting yourself. Otherwise, you're going to blow it big time. So all of that brings up the idea of wants and needs. Yes. Because sometimes it's hard to differentiate. I mean, a lot of people will say, you know what? I need an iPhone because if I don't have that iPhone, I will be able to stay in touch with my work associates. And personally, I, I would say I need a boat because I'll go crazy if I don't get to get out of the water. All right. 
We can fool ourselves all we want between needs and want. We can play the psychological word game between the difference between a need and a want. But if you don't have an eight-month emergency fund, if you aren't fully funding your retirement account, if you have credit card debt, if you're behind on payments, if your student loan is in deferment or even in default, you better get serious with your life and you know what a need is. You need to buy food at a grocery store for you to eat. You do not need to go to a restaurant. You need gasoline in your car possibly to get to work. You don't need gasoline in your car to go skiing. So you can fool yourself all you want. But in the end, the only person that you are hurting is you. So if you don't have money, you should only buy needs. You have to buy needs because you need it. If you just give up your wants, you'd be amazed how your life turns around. So you're talking about things that people need to do to take care of debt, to pay off things that are hanging over their head perhaps. But what about saving for the future? What should be the number one priority? Because that's, that's a debate I hear all the time. Well, I, I know I should really be paying off that college loan, but I have nothing saved for tomorrow. When it comes to college loans, I'm here to tell you, college loans are the most dangerous debt you could have of any kind of debt out there. More dangerous than mortgage debt, um, IRS debt, credit card debt. Why? Because in most cases, student loan debt is not dischargeable in bankruptcy. So if you just stop paying it, all of a sudden you watch 20000 go to 40000 goes to 80000 goes to 100000 and that's when they come knocking on your door because they want you to get further in debt because they can garnish your Social Security check if they want to. So when it comes to certain debt, such as student loan debt, you better pay your student loan debt before you are even saving for an emergency fund. If it's one or the other, debt has to be your choice. But why do you all have to be all or nothing investors? Why can't you, if you have $100, split it? $50 towards debt, $50 towards savings. That's not how we think about money, but we sure need to. And as you said again, to reiterate, certain debt takes priority over perhaps I just want to kind of recap on what something that they said. One about the student loans. Student loans is a very hefty debt. Something that you should definitely pay attention to. If you have student loans that are due and you have not paid them, you will not be able to get a house. That is unfortunate, but it's a fact. They do not want to see your student loans all and all out of want to see good. So she touched on something that was really great as well about breaking up your amount of money that you have to save. If you only have $100, you don't have to save the whole $100. Save $50. Start. Just get started. You don't have to save the whole $100. I know there's a lot of people who have different situations in which they may or may not be able to save that much. But anything that you can put to the side will definitely help. So a couple of key things to keep in mind if you are interested in finding a home is definitely no student loan debt. Um, you can have the debt, but you to be actively paying. So we're going to move forward to the best ways to save for your down payment on your home. The first thing you want to do is figure out how much you'll need to save. How much is that down payment? Well, typically a down payment for a home is around 3%, 3 to 5%. So talk to your real estate agent and your lender and just find out exactly how much you have to come, you have to have to have a down payment. Now your down payment is different than your closing costs. So those are two separate things. We want to make sure that you're saving for both. Closing costs may, depending on the, the property um, amount, it may cost you less than your down payment. More than likely it will. So you want to just make sure that you know exactly what you're saving for and that you are able to save for that. Another good way of saving is to make room in your budget. Make some room in your budget. We talked about having a budget last week, a budget where you itemize every bit of money that you have on your paycheck is 
a, is accounted for, even if it's to go to your school, your child's tuition, if it's to go to a hairdo or a hair appointment, or if it's to go to your car note, your car insurance, you want to itemize everything that you have so that you know where your money is at and where it's going as well. So a good way of saving also is to add that add this new fee into your budget. Call it the down payment um, savings account. Call it something where you you know you that you're definitely not going to decide that you want to take money out of. Once you start putting money into these accounts, you want to make sure that you keep it there because that's gonna it's gonna build. And if you can find a savings account that gives you some type of interest, that's even better because then you're you're actually building on the money that you put into the account, and you're not you don't have to put that extra amount in there the bank will will give you an uh, uh, interest rate I'm not exactly sure how how the interest rates are right now but um, you definitely want to make sure that you put it to the side another great way of, of saving for your down payment is to set up an automated savings plan we're going to more towards the end of the show as well an automatic savings plan is something that is automatically deducted from your bank account or from your checking account. And the great thing about that is that you never even know that the money is missing. Over time, I mean, the first paycheck, yeah, you're probably going to be like, hey, my check looks a little short, maybe $20, maybe $50. But over time, once you learn how to use your budget and how to work with the money that you still have remaining, you will never even miss that money. Another great way is to bank your windfalls. When we get taxes, we get tax returns back. I know a few years back we got a refund check from the president. I, now, I, I know what I did with my check, but what did you guys do with your check? <laughs> I actually went to buy the, one of the biggest TVs I could find with that check. So I guess that wasn't the best way to utilize that money. But, you know, that's a good way to save as well. If you get bonuses, if you get extra money, a lot of people don't get extra money on their paychecks. So if you get tax returns, that's a good avenue to put that to the side or at least put some of it to the side and um, start saving. You can build a flexibility into your savings plan as well because there are going to be other demands on your finances, um, which can include you know repairs to the home or, or something that may happen with your, your child or something at work. You know, you want to you want to be prepared for that. And when I talk, I also talked earlier about um, hardship, you know, hardship um, account, just money put to the side for a rainy day or hardship. That's important. You want to actually put that to the side first or an emergency fund to the side first because life happens. You know, when you don't expect a certain bill to be due or something to happen with your you know, with your rent or some additional fee that you didn't expect. You want to kind of have some money put to the side so that you can take care of that and separately put money to the side for your savings for your down payment. So I have just a few more tips on the best way to save for a down payment on your home. Now these tips here um, involve kind of making your money work for you in a way. If you're 10 years out from purchasing a home, you may want to consider purchasing a stock or definitely investing in your 401k. So purchasing a stock, you would definitely want to talk to someone that knows all about stocks, a stockbroker, maybe a friend of the family that has invested before. You want to make sure that, you know, you're you're putting your money somewhere where it's still safe. You know, stock markets are not completely safe, but they will help you build your money if you know what you're doing and how to do it. They are very helpful. Five to seven years out from buying a house, you still may want to consider putting your your um, your money into a, a stock or a bond. Um, traditionally, they say that a long-term bond fund or individual bonds work best, and then you're able to remove your money within three years. So if you're about two to four years out from purchasing a home, then you want to make sure that you do not put your money into a stock, but yet put your money into some type of a CD where after six months or a year, you're able to remove that money and utilize it. If you're just one year out from purchasing a definitely 
are not going to let you move your money around and you know kind of work with it as you want so when you're out keep your money liquid do something put it in an account where you can access it easily and it won't cause a problem so I have some more information we're going to talk about when we come back from our commercial break um, we're going to discuss budgeting I know in the last in the last clip she said it's not about a budget but it is about a budget um, so we're going to just briefly discuss that and then if we still have time we'll talk about automating finances Popcorn. Imagine this. Your husband does something you never thought he'd do. They work in smaller quarters than we do, battle more crowds, feel more pressure to succeed. I saw that first, bimbo! Hairstyles are like boyfriends. Every now and then you need one. Lunchables from Oscar Mayer. Lunch will never be the same. Alyssa Frayden. Hey guys, how's it going? Forget anything, anything at all. Think, you're losing it. Calcium. Every day, 100 milligrams here, 30 there. So take me with my active. The road is paved with idiots. Will you turn the corner or keep heading down the same road? Will you go the next mile or be content to travel in the same circles? Re-roofing the barn was fun, and so are these chicken quesadilla wrappers. Say hello to Very Berry. The new Quaker Fruit and Oatmeal Cereal Bar. Just try to find a better bar. Then put the kettle on, stir up a cup, and share the coziness. Isn't it time for you to dress better? Bigsby and Crothers, be there, look cool, and don't miss the sale. Tonight, half the town will turn out for a good meal, and an even better cause. This crew makes some... Once upon a time, a place called Fidelity Bank came up with a very good idea. Rebate, rebate. No, not yet. Look at your script. You want the kind of control they can't sell with the panty. Place an eye pillow over your eyes. Yeah. If one is not available, you may use a cat. That's the wonder of Digital City Chicago from the Chicago Tribune. I said, well, do you know what your little dumpling wants? When you love someone, spread it on thick. With Betty Crocker, life is sweet. The American Dairy Association urges you to snack responsibly. Mm. Laura Russell. The last time you enjoyed so much. And we're back with the Sarah Renee Show on Smooth 90.5 FM HG Radio. And like I said before the break, we're going to jump into speaking about budgeting. Budgeting, yes. It's an awesome thing. It can be aggravating for some. But once you get a good start on it, it will help you tremendously. So we're going to just listen to this clip that I have about budgeting. And then I'm going to discuss with you why, again, that that's so important. So we're going to listen to budgeting.
have a savings account that is completely for your savings. there to help you it's there to show you what you have and how how you live are you living above your means are, or are you living within your means typically you want to live under your means that way you have some extra extra money to kind of do what you want to do with um, you don't want to spend exactly how much money you make because then you'll be frustrated and when when times get tough and tight you know, you won't have that extra available money um, to to play with. So we definitely want to try and live under our means instead of above our means. So what do you say when when we talk about living under our means? What does that mean? Well, let's just go into it. That may mean maybe not buying those nice gym shoes this time. Maybe you wait. Maybe you wear the next. Maybe you wait until the next pair come out. That may mean also um, maybe you don't want to get the most expensive car. Maybe you don't want to get the most expensive house. That's, a, that's another key point. Um, when you get approved for a home, and I know I'm jumping just a little bit, but when you get approved for a home, a pre-approval letter, it may say, congratulations, Mrs. Jones, you're approved for $300,000. Now, let's ask ourselves a question. Even though you're approved for $300,000, do you really want to use all $300,000 on a home? Probably not. Why, you may ask, because if you use all $300,000 for a home and your paycheck is just right at neck and neck with that, with that pre-approval letter, you'll be what we call cash or house poor. <laughs> Where you have a gorgeous house, oh, it's so beautiful, it's so awesome, but you're really broke. You're paying so much money back to the bank that it's almost not even a benefit for you to live in the house that you're living in because you can't, you don't have any extra money to go and do the things that you want to do, like going to dinner or going to a nice movie. It, it gets really, really tight. So that's why, you know, we want to definitely talk about budgeting because if you can foresee this and budget your money out, then you'll be better in the long run. So um, another way of budgeting, like we said, you know, there's some fancy coffee out there. Maybe you want to cut down on drinking that so much. Maybe you want to go to the movies once a month instead of every weekend. Things like that you can cut down on and it's helpful. Maybe you don't want to eat out so much. i uh, taking it from a, a, a person that used to eat out literally every single day. Um, it, it does make a difference in your, in your savings account, in your bank account. Um, cook cook at home cook good meals at home I know a lot of you probably do cook at home and you know I'm just kind of bringing up examples but just any way that you can conserve your money is a benefit because we want to look at this long term not short term we, and when you look at life you want to look at it in a long term perspective not short term not just for today because what we do today affects our tomorrow so if anybody have any questions, where are you guys at? Our number here is 708-345-0563. We are taking questions and comments today. So we're, again, back to back to the budgeting thing. I think that the budgeting is, is really uh, needed um, in today's economy and all in all economy. Um, it's, it's something that can definitely help you. It can really make you or break you. Now, if you're, you made a budget and you're not following it, well, then that's kind of defeating the purpose and you know you may want to it's not going to happen overnight either you're not going to be able to, to have this budget and then immediately just start following it without you know without making any errors that would be kind of a dream world but you know you're just starting you just want to do the best that you can until you get it right eventually you'll be only spending money that is in the budget and you'll be able to save a tremendous amount of money and I think that that's, um, you know, that's, all, that's a really good thing for anybody's finances, especially if you have children or if you're, you know, in college or anything like that. You want to save as much money as possible. So just going back into how, ways of saving money, and some of these are actually pretty funny. Um, a cheap way of saving money is hmm, 
separate your two ply toilet paper um, I don't know about that one but that's a that's definitely a tip <laughs> this next tip is cut your own hair now funny I actually driving in today saw a gentleman in a very nice luxury car who just so happened to have a pair of scissors out <laughs> trimming his hair now I know you probably don't believe me but it's the truth I, I saw this driving in today and I thought it was actually pretty um pretty interesting and you know hey if it works it, it works for you um, so cutting your own hair <laughs> cutting your own hair might work for some people maybe not for Also, we're going to move into okay. So, some of those last tips could make you a little bit miserable, you know, separating your two. Um, right out of your even real. so we have automated way automated so you get your actually um, think that more than 5% is is really needed in a 401k especially if your job matches you dollar for dollar um, but you know I could be wrong but then also with the rest of your salary, you can you can put your money into a savings account. You can put it into a checking account. So rims. Or you can put, not rims. We're not doing rims. We're we're trying to be proper right now. We're not going to do rims. But you can do rims if you've saved enough money to buy some rims. Hey, no one says we can't go out and have fun, right? Or you can put the rest of your money into a, a Roth RIA. R excuse me, a Roth IRA. I have a crazy man in the studio with me today. <laughs> so, those are just some different ways that you can kind of manage your money. And a good way also of managing your money is to keep your money separate. Put a name on each amount of money, each package of money that you have. Um, this is for savings. This is for vacation. This is for my car. This is for my hair, um, etc. So... If part of your money goes into that 401k, that is definitely a great way to save. And then you can take that money out and use it if you need to. Now, there will be a penalty. Um, I believe it's about 9% about penalty, which may be high. But if you desperately need that money, it's not so high, right? You actually have some money that you can use.
but you do want to get those credit scores up. So when we come back from our commercial break, we're going to just discuss a little bit more about how to automate your finances. And this is the Sarah Renee Show, and we're on Smooth 90.5 FM HD Radio. And read first before you do so. Um, you can make money on the side. I know most people in Chicago have a side hustle. I used to have one for many years, and I used to cut grass and babysit, and that was my side hustle, if you will, in addition to my full time job. It, it helped. Um, I would be able to make some extra money over the weekend that was able to actually help me to get the frivolous things that I wanted to get um, without dipping into my savings or into my budget. So we're going to just jump in. How do I
to draw from your checking account to your Roth IRA. Right. I'll talk to you about timing in a second, but stick with me for now. Now, in your checking account, you've got money. Now your money has already been withdrawn to the appropriate places. So you've got a few places now that you want to send it in terms of spending. Okay? Which one do you hear? From your checking account. You're going to use your checking account to pay off your credit card. So what my credit card does is once a month, it reaches into my checking account and it says, all right, your bill is $1,000 this month. I'm going to take $1,000 out of my checking account. Of course, I know there's $1,000 there because I know my paycheck arrives on the first of the month. And when it withdraws the bill, it's going to take it straight from my checking account, causing me no overdrafts because I know there's money in there. The other place you're going to be uh, putting money in is you're going to be putting it into miscellaneous bills. So let me show you what this means. Sorry, for miscellaneous bills, these are things where you want to pay it off, but unfortunately, the recipient doesn't accept credit cards like rent. So for example, if you have rent, you're probably your, let's say you have an old woman for a landlord, she may not have a credit card uh, processing fee set up because she's backwards and all. So you probably have to send her a check. I don't send a check manually ever unless I absolutely have to. I set it up so that on, let's say, the 31st or 30th of the month, it goes from my checking account automatically because I know the amount is the same every month. So I set up what's called bill pay. All banks have this now through their checking account. So a bill is automatically issued. Remember, I know there's money in here because my paycheck is here. It sent money to my checking account, and I know there's at least a thousand dollars left. So an automatic check is issued on it's around the 26th of the month. That goes here to your landlord, and you never have to touch it at all. All you do is you get an email notification around the 26th saying your check has been sent, and your landlord always gets it on the exact right date. On, let's go back to your credit card for a second. Your credit card should have all standard bills. So we're going to talk about bills like Rhapsody or Netflix, anything that's a standard amount that you know the same amount is going to be charged every month. So Netflix, 12 bucks a month, boom, it's going to be transferred on my credit card, 
and I'm never going to have to worry about it again. You, what you do is you go to Netflix, you add your credit card, you just set up automatic billing. Of course, it will bill this, and this will be paid off by logging into that. Okay. Um, the other thing is your guilt-free spending. All right. So if you are maxing out your 401k, if you are maxing out your Roth IRA, if you are doing a savings plan that gets you where you need to go, you definitely should be spending money. And so you should enjoy your money. When I go out and I spend money, I don't feel guilty about it ever, partially because I'm a robot, and second, because uh, I know that the rest of my finances are being taken care of. This is where guilt-free spending comes in. So if you spend money on a nice dinner, don't feel guilty. You know that everything else is being handled automatically. And finally, there are the occasional amounts where you're going to have to do um, cash withdrawals. I don't like to use cash because I don't earn points. and. Uh, you know, it's just kind of messy. I prefer to charge everything on my credit card so I can track it. But once in a while, you are going to need to do cash withdrawals. So you may just want to say, you know, $100 a month or $100 every two weeks, whatever it may be. That's going to come straight from your checking through your debit card here. I Again, you'll note that there is not a debit card used here. I don't really like debit cards very much. So I just prefer to put everything on my credit card as much as possible. Okay? Now, we're going to talk about one other thing. And I'll come back to that... Uh, whiteboarding in a second, but we're going to talk about the timing on this because it's pretty important. Um, let me first sum up what we just talked about. Uh, in this diagram, okay, you have your, let me sit over here, in this diagram you have your paycheck which arrives, it then pays your 401k and it pays your checking account. You then have your checking account which is the central part, it's like your email inbox, it pays your Roth IRA your savings account, which is subdivided into wedding, vacation, or whatever savings goals you have, pays your credit card. Your credit card will actually reach into your checking account and pay itself once a month. You're gonna, um, your checking account is going to pay fixed costs that don't take credit cards, like rent or miscellaneous bills, and the occasional cash withdrawals. The credit card, of course, is going to pay your fixed costs, like your bills, um, and it's going to allow you to have some guilt-free spending. Okay, so that's the way you automate your financial accounts. Now, a couple, one thing I want to talk to you on the uh, timing. So here's how I prefer to set it. The first of the month, you get paid. Your paycheck arrives, okay? The other thing is your credit card bill should arrive. Now, remember, when your bill arrives, you have about two weeks to pay it out. So keep that in mind. On the second of the month, your paycheck will pay your 401k. Your paycheck will also direct deposit into your checking account. It's really important to set up direct deposit. First of all, you can get a bunch of free stuff from your bank for doing it, like free checking and all this stuff. Second, you just shouldn't be having to go to the bank and deposit it. You want your money to start earning interest right away. You also don't want to have checks that are large enough, like your paycheck, to be sitting around. Get it direct deposited. You can talk to your employer in the HR department to set that up. On the fifth of the month, your checking should pay your savings account and your Roth IRA. The reason a few days is in case your check doesn't come through for some reason. You don't want to have an automatic transfer where your Roth is taking money out of your checking account and you have an overdraft. So I leave a few days just to make sure you tidy everything up. Okay. On the seventh of the month, you're going to pay your bills from your credit card. Okay, and any other miscellaneous spending. The reason I do that is um, because you want to make sure that all the cash is in your checking account. Everything else has been processed. That way, when your credit card is paid off. You know the bill is $1,000, and you're going to make sure your checking account has at least $1,000 in there, and it's going to pay it off automatically. Okay, so just to kind of go over what the clip was discussing, I, have, I took a couple of notes, and I want to just kind of go over it with you guys. Um, now, however you guys decide to set this up is pretty much up to you. But I'm going to give you just a, a few pointers um, when you're trying to, you know, save money and make your money work for you. One thing that I personally do not think, um, one thing that I personally would not advise for you guys to do is to pay bills with a credit card. And the reason I say this is because it's really like debt on top of debt. So you pay all your bills off with a credit card. Then, guess what? That credit card bill is due. And on top of that, that credit card is going to charge you interest every single month. And they're going to charge you additional interest 
if you're over your over your um, balance that they want you to have or you know anything such as that as well um, you're only really supposed to be spending about 30% of your credit card balance so if the credit card company says hey Miss Smith you know we want to give you this credit card we have a three thousand dollars on it have fun you know go to the mall they want you to spend all that money they want you to spend all that money because then they're going to charge you interest So we're just going to go ahead and get out of here. And um, I would love to hear if anyone has time to call in within these last few minutes. I would love to hear from you. The number again.